HDTV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. This week on Gentle Giants, we continue our coverage of the acres of draft horses and related items from here in Waverly, Iowa. Three sales going on at the same time. Literally hundreds of wagons, buggies, sleighs, and horse-drawn implements. That's right, Pam. There's a building filled with harnesses and every horse-related item that you can think of. And drawing the most attention, the horse barns and auction ring. We'll show you the excitement of the Waverly Midwest Horse Sale when Gentle Giants begins. <laughs> Welcome back to Gentle Giants. For more than six decades, the Waverly Sale has had a reputation of selling dependable horses and just about everything else horse related. Through the years, it's also become a reunion of sorts for draft horse lovers. This sale barn started in 1947. I've been here about 32 years. Me and Ron's owned it half and half since 1998 when we bought his father out. We try to do everything the correct way and treat everybody how you want to be treated, you know, and I always say it's kind of like a big family reunion. You know, you always get a certain percentage of people that are new and you get to know them and the people come back spring and fall or some just come once a year and they become part of your family, you know, almost. You just get to know them and heck, I take vacations and I go see some of the people and visit them. Waverly is one of the, the larger um, draft horse and equipment auctions in the, the Midwest. And I've been coming here since 1980. And it's a social event as well as an auction. So you have the horse sale, you have the harness sale, um, the equipment, the wagons, the mowers, and, and everything that related with horses that, that brings everybody together. And so we spend more time visiting than we do <laughs> at the auction. Um, so it, it is very much a social event, but you know, I personally, having a wagon shop, come here looking for unique items that we can, uh, you know, either integrate into a wagon or study. We we take a lot of photos of historic vehicles that may show up at the auction. We may not buy them, but we study them. So. It's research on that side for me. It's also networking because all the people who use our products are here at the sale. And so we get to have you know, that reunion with our customers and, and, uh, and uh, make connections and such. It is, I mean, this is the only draft horse sale that I can think of um, where they have a campground that fills up. And I don't know for sure, but a lot of the people, I don't think the campers are, are necessarily buyers or sellers. They just come here because they love it. Um, the, the fact that they have two days worth of tack and equipment is, is also pretty unique um, to this sale and it, it obviously draws a different crowd than you'll see at some of the other draft horse au auctions. I started coming here with my dad in the late 70s. Um, I've got uncles and cousins that come and sell draft horses so we've been coming here a long time. We started camping here in the early 80s and then just started working and helping where we can. For the first timer, it's really quite overwhelming. Uh, there's so many things to see, so many good people to talk to, uh, learn a lot. Uh, just depends on what you're looking for is what you're gonna find. There is such a variety here, new and used saddles, bridles, harness. If you go outside up on the hill, there's equipment, wagons, buggies. Everything that the horse people are looking for, you can definitely find it in Waverly. When I first started coming down here, the sales were held in a tent. And this, uh, what we see here, is something that I've seen grow over the years. And the first time I'd ever heard of Waverly was from a horse trader in my area in about 1965. And he was hauling draft horses down here because it was a place to bring them at that time. So what you'll see here over four days is uh, a quite a large line of machinery up in the machinery row. You're going to see quite a bit of harness used and new in the, uh, in the tack building, in the uh, pole building out there. Then you'll see rows of wagons and then of course then the horses are here. It's a very enjoyable uh, thing if you're interested in this sort of thing. It's quite, quite the thing. It's something that uh, some of us 
have been doing for many years. I started coming down here in 1971, and I've been coming pretty steady now for the last 15 or 20 years. But uh, it's been uh, been interesting to watch the changes here and the change in the industry and what uh, people are uh, interested in, what they're buying, and it's been a good, good experience. 95-year-old Fred Eberly has more than five decades of memories at Waverly. This building wasn't here. They used to sell in the tents. <clears throat> you know. And I remember one time they said there was going to be a tornado, so they kicked us all out of the tent. And then it rained so hard, it was just like a river going down through here. Everybody in the United States know, and Canada knows about this sale. You know, it's just one of the bigger and better ones. Meeting so many different people from all over the, the world that come here and uh, just to see the sale. They have people from Canada, from overseas that uh, come here to buy horses, well broke horses, and it's just kind of like a, a reunion. A lot of the people love to come back to see everybody and it's also interesting to come see different pieces of equipment that uh, come up in the hill and that for to sell. We are from Sharon, Wisconsin, which is close to the southern uh, Illinois-Wisconsin border. Uh, we come spring and fall. It's our mini vacation. We enjoy seeing everything for sale. Um, all the people, you see the same people, it seems like, each season, get to know friends. Uh, we have a group of friends that come, the whole group, and we, we spend the day together and buy all sorts of things. Um, go out for dinner in the evening, it's a nice town. You always end up buying something, whether you need it or not. Uh, lots of things to choose from, it's just unending. You wonder how they come in with new things each season, year after year. Um, it's just fun. We come for the fun. It can be overwhelming because you you just it's unending the amount of harness and wagons and equipment. When it comes to horse equipment, if they don't have it at the Waverly auction, you probably don't need it. You'll see what I'm talking about when Gentle Giants returns. <laughs> Welcome back to Gentle Giants. The Waverly sale spans several acres covered with wagons, buggies, sleighs, and horse-drawn equipment, and a building filled with everything a horse owner wants or needs. Right here we're in the Morton building where they sell harness saddles and tack, halters, lead ropes, bridles, you name it. Little everything in the horse business. And you meet some awful nice people. The day we sell half of the tack and equipment, or half of the tack and saddles and stuff into the building, tomorrow we'll sell the other half. Out in the lot we sell farm machinery and all the small stuff up on top of the hill. And then tomorrow we sell with wheels, sleighs, pony stuff, trailers, then the buggies and surreys and bigger wagons. It's long days, you don't, it's not a day that you, you get a few hours in. Uh, when we get on equipment up there on the hill, we already know prior how many, of, how many numbers we have, and we kind of have to pace ourselves to make the numbers match the day. So we know how many sales a, a minute or an hour we should try to make, and we kind of watch the clerking sheets to make sure it happens. This time of the afternoon is the wagon auction, and uh, the triple box wagons are um, coming up next on the auction, and these are the wagons that uh, are are the workhorses of the agriculture area here in, in Iowa. So, you know, they've been kind of filtering out of the barns for years, and we will find uh, some original wagons, some restored wagons, and uh, our hope is we can, we can pick up one to take back to the shop and, uh, and restore. We operate a Western Entertainment chuck wagon cookout wagon ride business in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we do that during the season, October through March or April. And then we load the mares up and go to Western Colorado and farm. And so we have a nice mix of using the horses commercially in carriages, wagons, chuck wagon cookouts, parades, all kinds of fun things like that. And then we actually use them to farm and make hay in the summertime. And so Waverly offers all of the parts and pieces that go into that. Wagons, farming implements, harness, everything you can imagine is here. And of course in Arizona, 
and even parts of Western Colorado, the availability of those items is just not there. This is the place to be. We're looking for some specific little farming items, a wagon gear, some wheels, some other things. And the fun part about Waverly is not just what you're looking for, but it's the camaraderie. It's the networking of all of these wonderful people who share a love of driving horses and heavy horses. And of course, you get to see a lot of things you didn't come looking for, but you really wish you could take home. So there's a few things we passed on, but maybe the next trip. We farm um, with draft horses. We do some irrigated ground hay, and uh, we drag some logs. We, have, we used to have a sawmill, and we drag logs off of National Forest land to, um, for firewood and uh, for, for lumber. And uh, we make hay, plow ground, we have a garden, and we have two small children, Wyatt and Riata. Their ages are three and five. And uh, we are trying to raise our children in a more sustainable, renewable lifestyle. Um, we have had tractors in the past and now we farm strictly with horses and uh, we find it much more enjoyable and uh, plus it's cheaper, there's more room for profit and uh, we just like having horses and we figured that we might as well put them to work for us. Uh, this is our first time at Waverly. We've been to draft horse sales in Colorado and also in Ohio, but uh, it's, it's a little overwhelming to come here because there's, there's so much equipment and so much to choose from. And we, we bought some stuff at pretty reasonable prices and uh, we've, we've purchased some new equipment and some used equipment in the past off dealers. And um, we purchased some, some mowers and stuff here and four cart and some things that we were looking for. And there's, there's definitely plenty to look at and plenty to go through. I'm from uh, Montreal, Quebec. I'm Regine, and uh, I like the auction Waverly, Iowa. I buy a lot of good stuff, and I bring a lot of stuff from Canada too for the big auction here. And I just like Waverly, Iowa, and I buy a big load of sleigh for bring to uh, Canada because I have a lot of customer for sleigh now in Quebec, and uh, I find a lot of good stuff here in Waverly. I'm really happy, and I like the winner of the auction here. Uh, Ron Dean and David Byer, nice people for me and wife and family. Nice people. Yeah, I love Waverly. I think I bought uh, 18 sleigh today. And uh, I bring all back to Quebec, go to custom and declare to the border for business and restore some sleigh, some carriage too. The big stagecoach uh, probably I use at the farm in Montreal for a trail ride and cowboy movie in Canada because I ran a lot of stagecoach for a movie in Montreal too. I like this uh, because it's a small size, always a, buck, a big size and I like this size, it's a small for pony, it's good. When Gentle Giants returns, we'll head to the sail ring. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. More than 600 horses will sell in two days here at Waverly, from Percherons and Belgians to Clydesdales, Draft Crosses, and even Minis. Their reputation for judging the team's performance means dependable horses and an honest representation. We start at 9 o'clock and we start through our catalog and uh, sell all draft horses, Percherons and Belgians, followed by Halflingers and Fjords at the end. Uh, the night tomorrow is the one who sell the Clydes and Shires and the draft crosses. And then the light horses, saddle horses. You're going to see good broke teams, you're going to see colts, you're going to um, see every part of it there in that. But the first thing in the morning starts with the national anthem. And after that, the sale is on. And then uh, you'll see from 35 to 50 horses an hour going through. And we try to keep that pace all day. Some might be a little more and sometimes, sometimes a little less, depending on the horse. But there'll be some hitch horses coming through. There'll be some show mares coming through. Um, you'll kind of, like I said, you'll see it all. And it'll start right out in the morning. It will, will, it's, it's not unusual to have a uh, top team come out in the first 10 horses in the ring. So, I mean, you want to make sure you're there from the start because they don't necessarily stage them so that they come through at a certain time. Because everybody comes here and they're with their horses and uh, represent their own horses and tell you everything about them. And, and uh, you get to see if the horses are broke, they have to be go out and hook up. And they do, right, there's a guy out doing the judging on the of the horses and how well broke they are and how they stand, how they move. 
get there early and go through the stalls, talk to the owners. Uh, they've got a hitching area out back and, uh, and we encourage all the people to hitch their horses. Some of the guys will hitch their horses several times, but go back and talk to the owner. Um, you know, have your minds made up because when they come in the ring, because when they come in the ring, you're probably going to have maybe a couple minutes to make up your mind what you want. Maybe a little more in some cases, but that's about what it takes a lot of times is one to two minutes on a team. So you want to have your minds made up there in that then and uh, just be ready to do business and go. There's several ringmen in the ring, so if there's any questions throughout the process, I mean, that's what they're there for, is to help the buyer through the process there in that then. We have two Percheron Morgan Crosses, um, both mares, nine and 10 years old, and they just drive, they farm, do a lot of farming things, and they can drive in parades and wagons, and great mares, good disposition, quiet, good looking. Yep, we'll just hitch them up and take them out on the grounds and drive them around and people can come watch and ask all the questions you like and that's what we'll do. We'll just kind of show them off a little bit. Bruce Prince, he bought them here about six years ago as three and four year olds. So we're just coming back and hope to sell them back again for a good price. Learning to drive and just learning about all the different draft breeds and stuff, it's really interesting and it's, I really love learning and it's a good way to learn just coming here and seeing all the different horses and all the different people owning them and driving them, so it's a good learning experience for me. Among the potential buyers, Gentle Giants saw familiar faces looking for a special horse. Jason Goodman of Percher on Thunder said he's looking for a horse for himself and some for clients. Bob and Judy Gunville and Bud Miller of the 2013 World Champion Six Horse Hitch Wilderness Ridge had their eye on Belgians. While Jim and Peggy Day, co-owners of the 2014 World Champion Blue Ribbon Days Hitch, paid special attention to Percherons. They have more than 60 on their farm. I get so excited every year. I, I like to come twice a year and I stay all week. I come Monday, I can sign some stuff and hang out all week. And I come by myself, but I meet lots of people, so I find it lots of fun. I've brought lots of horses here to sell and I also come to buy. And I just think that people stand behind their horses and it's a safe place to buy horses because they're always good. I started driving and training about eight years ago. I started raising just the Percherons and then I switched over to Spotted Drafts, so I have both. And I raise about six babies a year and sell them all over the United States. So I find that really enjoying the people come back for more, so I, I don't really have enough. I've got a Percheron paint mare that I'm looking at and they're both homozygous. So I have a Percheron stallion at home I'd like to cross them with, so I'm really excited. It's hard to find the homozygous drafts. I'm trying to raise some more spotted drafts because there just isn't any to choose from. So I've got a couple homozygous registered mares at home and I'd like to pick up a third here, so I need some luck. Angie Rodeman was excited to have the winning bid on lot 176. T.O.K. Corey, a five-year-old registered spotted draft mare that hitches and drives. Angie will be raising more spotted draft babies.
Proving that the draft horse market is alive and well, this impressive Percheron team, Duke and Doc, consigned by Raymond Yoder, sold for $16,000 each to Matthew Miles of Montrose, Colorado. We hope you enjoyed the two shows we devoted to Waverly. If you're looking for a horse, this is the place to come. It's a charming community and a great sale, but bring your walking shoes. <laughs> That's right, Pam, and we had such a great time meeting new friends and seeing obviously old ones. In the meantime, you can always check us out on Facebook and we'll see you right back here next time on Gentle Giants. Bye now.